refrigerant recovery using field piece equipment for automotive use. For most of you in automotive industry have never heard of field piece, but field piece, you're always hear hearing of Snap-on Mac, Robin Air, some other yellow jacket or something like that. But field piece is actually one of the leaders in air conditioning, uh, refrigeration, uh, and residential HVAC equipment. Uh, in automotive, it's a little pricey and automotive industry is considered kind of like the lower level cheap guys who considered not well educated. So they just throw them the scrap material. This is of a higher end, a higher spectrum of material with more accurate and more uh, gauges and sensors and actually math compilations that are done inside to give you superheat and subcooling stuff guys are not normally taught in automotive and um, just because of quick easy and cheap so we're going to go to next level so if you're in automotive business but you don't want one of those big machines because you have a little tiny shop and something like equipment like this can be stored away up on your shelf or hung up or put out of the way or all on one little push cart instead of a giant machine uh, buying one of those six or eight thousand dollar machines might be out of your budget level so here's a setup that you can use where you could do recovery and recharging so i'm just going to do a quick overview if you want more detailed information go on youtube look for macs refrigerant certification 609 the 609 certification from macs and that'll go through procedures rules laws and regulations how to perform a recovery i'm just doing a quick overview here so here is a system where this is the vacuum pump right here i have this is um the 8 cfm model this is actually the older model they have a new replacement this is the vp85 they now have a newer one and as you can see this stuff is not new out of a box this is actually used daily and roughly it's not a prima donna let me uh take it out and unbox it and show you and i don't know what i'm doing kind of scenario like a lot of the youtube things here is the actual recovery unit this actually recovers the refrigerant and this is uh, your mr 45 and here is the field piece scale bluetooth the weight scale is there bluetooth wirelessly hooks up and gives you the scale so here's the weight of our tank right now let's zero it out and so now we're zeroed out we're at zero weight we're going to measure what comes out of the vehicle goes into the recovery unit gets condensed back to a liquid comes out the red hose and fills the tank and leaves it for you ready to do a recharge or a replacement of a component so we'll stick that right there we're not going to recover out of the high side first i've covered this in other videos that i've made because you do not want to recover liquid refrigerant because you will remove oil out of the system and you do not want to remove oil so let me show you one other thing sometimes you will damage these little fine o-ring seals that are inside of here if you'll focus come on focus it doesn't want to focus this morning there we go so inside there sorry for not having light but there's an o-ring that could be damaged especially if you're in an area this little area right here this straight area is where the o-ring slides on if that's rough damage has dirt on it or has oxidized it will damage your o-ring inside causing leaks causing you to bring in air not pull a good vacuum so way around that and here i am trying to do everything with one hand and it's not working out well dropping stuff the way around that this is nylog and you also can use dielectric grease spark plug boot boot grease is what a lot of guys know it as and you just put it on this surface area just a little bit because when the o-ring slides over and has to make contact with this outer edge of this shell right here that's where your ceiling's done so you take this if i had enough and you just put it around the outside come on around the outside there and this was
for doing your refrigerant analyzer. I have other videos on this, but you always test your refrigerant before you take it out so you don't get contaminated refrigerant. Right there, right around the outside there. This will protect your O-rings. So when you slide them on there, you don't damage them and you get a perfectly vacuum tight seal. Okay, so now we're set up. So I already have, since this is a four part manifold, this one is dedicated just for vacuum. This one is dedicated just for refrigerant. So while I'm performing all my procedures, the vacuum pump is running, pumping out air and moisture contamination out of the hoses that I'm gonna to use to recover my refrigerant in. So it's already prepped. We're already down to 275 microns and dropping. So the next procedure we're gonna do is we're only going to open up the low side and take vapor because this is the highest point, especially on this one, this is really the highest point. That means any possible liquid or oil are down at the bottom end of this line, which is the suction line and down at the bottom end of this line. So when you recover refrigerant, you're gonna be pulling off the top and you're gonna be pulling off vapor only without removing oil and liquid refrigerant. So let's close off our vacuum. I just killed the vacuum. So now the vacuum's not running and there's no need to have the vacuum running anymore. I'm gonna close and attach the port by screwing it down lightly just heard it make noise, that's all you have to do. Don't crank down on them, don't cause damage. So right now we're gonna open up the refrigerant line. The high side, let's close that because we will be doing that later. So let's do that. The high side is closed, so we're not gonna take out, but we are gonna put this down. There we go, here's something. And we have pressure right there. So this is the recovery, right there it says recovery. This is when you do purging at the end of the test and we have closed in the up and top and lower position. So right now we're gonna open it up. We have the vapor coming down to this point but it's in the closed position so it's not in the machine. So as soon as I put in the machine, there will be a, you'll hear a little purging of gas coming through here. So listen. Did you hear that? That's all you needed. Just that little, as soon as you heard something, it purged any air out of this line out. So now you can close this. So now you're ready. Make sure you're zeroed. We are zeroed. Come on, zero. Now we're zeroed. Let's bring this down here where you guys can see it. Let's put this into the recovery position. Let's hit the button. And you'll see the pressure start to drop right here. And that's going to your vehicle, up to your gauges. This pressure is the liquid going out and you'll see that increase because heat of compression will raise the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant as it goes into the tank. Open up our gauge, which would have been nice. If it was a really hot day, that high side would have went up really fast. So as you can see, we already got 50 grams out of the vehicle and into this tank. And you'll see the low side pressure go down. And we're not open on the high side pressure, but we're actually reading the pressure on the high side. And you also can see that corresponding with the low side also go down because it's pulling everything out as a vapor form on the low side. It's going into the machine. It has a fan in there, it has a condenser, just like this condenser, and it's turning that vapor into a liquid, just like this liquid line here down at the bottom when it gets uh, condensed down into a liquid. And then under pressure, it's pushing it into the tank. And we're down to the zero point. Now remember, for detailed, fine, exact instructions, MACS 609 certification test, look it up on YouTube, and they'll give you some finer points. This is just a rough overview. And this is a very economic uh, system made by field piece. Refrigerant gauges, there's a lot more features to these gauges than just gauges. Uh, I'm not showing the, those in this video. As you can see, here's a thermistor for taking temperature. These are thermistor temperature clamps that are on here used for other purposes. Guys who have never, never been trained in automotive, 
don't know about because they've never had any legitimate schooling. They just heard from a guy from a guy or, you know, an uncle or a father showed them, or maybe they sat in a little class for six hours, three hours, maybe a two day class and that's it. That's the limit of their whole knowledge and they know no more. So in a little short class, that's only a day or two long, they don't have time to go into these other features on automotive. Uh, all right, so we're getting down there. I'm gonna cut this video short because we don't need to see uh, grass grow or, or watch the paint dry because this is gonna take a little while. And normally you would start your engine. This was a collision damage and um, I can't start this one. This one's not, in, it's been smashed over here and some of the lines are crunched underneath. So I can't start this to warm up the engine and get all the components warm and that would speed up your refrigerant recovery procedure. But if you were just had a vehicle come into your shop and they only wanted a routine maintenance, they haven't done their air conditioning recharge in say five years and they say, hey, I wanna recharge my air conditioning just for preventive maintenance. And you would go through this whole entire procedure you would recover out the refrigerant. And then when you were finished recovering your re refrigerant, which you would see the exact precise instructions in the MAX 609 certification test video on YouTube, you would go to the next procedure where you would cut off the refrigerant line, turn on your vacuum pump, and start vacuuming out the system the rest of the way, getting ready to add refrigerant. But we'll s might make another video on that immediately after this. Okay, so let's turn this back on, complete the rest of our refrigerant recovery process. And now that I have the system level so low, I am no longer worried about taking out liquid refrigerant here and removing oil. So I now can open the high side line. So let's do that right now and watch the high side pressure. And it's now removing the high side, the vapor that is left over in the liquid line, because there's no more liquid in there, it's now removing the rest of the refrigerant. And we'll continue on until we're at a minimum of negative 15 N can hold there. That will be discussed in the MAX 609 certification test and webinar that is free online on YouTube through the MAX website. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one.